In this video, we're going to recreate Apple's website navigation on Web Studio using the new Radix components. I'm going to start off by creating the structure of my horizontal menu. I'm going to add a first box, which I'll call section. Inside of that, I'll add a container. And within the container, we'll add the three columns that will live inside of our menu. I'm then going to set my container's display to flex. Make sure that its layout is set to horizontal and I want it to be justified as space around. From there, I'm going to add a max width to my container and I'm going to set the left and right margin to auto so that it stays centered. The first column of my container will house my home link and logo. Inside of this box, I'm going to add a link block and inside of the link, I'm going to add a HTML embed code. I'm then going to paste my SVG logo into my code block and I'm gonna remove the default text. Next, I'm going to add my icon column. I'll rename this box to icon. I'm going to change the layout from block to flex, and I want them to be centered on the left. Inside of my icon box, I'm going to add a second box, which will hold my search icon. And inside of this, I will add a HTML embed code. I'm then going to paste in my search icon code, and I'm gonna update the search box to have an icon class. Let's call this one Apple icon. I'm simply going to change its layout to flex, centered, and add a set width and height. I'm going to add a second icon to my by duplicating my search box and renaming it to bag. And same thing here, I'm going to update the bag icon with its own SVG. We can now add our horizontal menu. From your components, select the Radix navigation menu, drag it into your center box. And from here, we want to customize both the menu trigger as well as the menu content for each item. Let's start off with my trigger. I'm first going to select my button. Inside of my button, I'm going to add a link block. And inside of that link block, I'm also going to add some text. And I'm going to wrap that new text in a slot so that I can replicate that content when I build my mobile menu. For our menu today, I don't want to hide the icon container. So I'm simply going to select it. I'm going to give it a token of hidden icon, and I'm going to change its display to none. Let's also customize the style of this trigger. I'm gonna first change my link styles by changing its color back to inherit and removing the automatic underline. I'm then going to select my button and I'm gonna apply a new token to that button with my navigation styles. I'm quite happy with the look of my trigger. Now let's customize its content. To start, I want the content to fill the full width of the screen. So I'm gonna change its width from max content to 100 VW. I also want it to be positioned to the far left of my screen and not to the menu. To change its positioning, I'm going to go back to my navigation menu and change its position from relative to static. This will allow our content to position itself absolutely against our section. We can now begin populating our menu's content. I'm going to start off by removing the box which is there by default. I'm going to make sure all of my content stays centered by adding a container token and I'm going to update the flex column to display horizontally and the full width. I'm now going to add the different links to my menu content, making sure that each link sits inside of an accessible link wrapper. I also want to style the menu viewport of my navigation. To do so, simply select the viewport from your navigator and update your styling. For our case, we're simply going to remove the borders as well as the radius. Once you've finished styling your menu content and its viewport, we're going to wrap all of it inside of a slot so that it can be reused for our mobile menu. With our first item complete, we're going to quickly check that it works in the preview. And once validated, we can replicate this process for each of the other menu items. We're now going to build the mobile navigation. We'll start off by grabbing a sheet component and we'll drag that into our icon column. From there, we're going to customize the look of our sheet trigger by selecting it within our navigator and we'll update the SVG icon to the SVG icon on Apple's website. And let's now begin adding and styling content. I'm going to start off by selecting my sheet content. I'm going to change its max width to none as I want it to be full width on mobile. And I'm going to remove everything that currently exists inside of my navigation. I'll then add a dialog component. This is the new component that we will be using to create the submenus on the mobile navigation. For the content inside of our dialog, we are going to be reusing what we have already created for our horizontal menu. Those being the triggers and the content within those triggers. I'm 
going to start with my store trigger. I'm going to grab the slot, copy it, head back over to my new dialog, and simply paste in that slot into the button. I can then remove the original text that was inside that button. Same thing for the overlay. We're simply going to find the overlay's content, delete what currently exists in here, and replace it with the content that we originally created for our vertical menu. Lastly, I want to style the dialog overlay so that it also takes up the full screen. I'm going to remove the max width value and I'm going to set the height to 100 VH. Also going to enable an overflow on scroll just in case the content is too long for a mobile screen. With the dialog overlay styled, our last step is to style the button. Simply select the button from your navigator and begin applying your brand styles or add your brand tokens. With our first dialog complete, we're now going to replicate this process for the other menu items. With all our mobile navigation items now added, we're going to quickly update the display of the horizontal nav as well as the mobile nav so that they only show on their respective devices. For the horizontal nav, I'll change its display to none on mobile. And for the sheet trigger, I'll change its display to none on desktop and then back to block on mobile. With my new menu created, I'm now going to test it in preview. Simply open the preview. We'll start off by testing the accessibility. On keyboard, I'll tab into the menu. I can use my arrow keys to navigate through my navigation, open the nav, or close it. And same thing, if I look at this on a smaller device, I can also open the navigation via keyboard and navigate through my different menu items. And that is how you can rebuild a fully accessible Apple website navigation inside of Web Studio using the new Radix components.